Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Dai Gauranga, Dai Gauranga. 
Jai Gauranga, Jai Gauranga. Jai Shachi Nandana, Jai Shachi Nandana. Jai Shachi Nandana, Jai Shachi Nandana. Goran Hari, Goran Hari. Gora Hari, Gora Hari. Itai Goranga, Itai Goranga. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Gora Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Jai Jai Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Jai Prabhu Pa. Jaya Jaya Guru De Guru De Jaya Guru De
नमस्ते नरसिंहा नमस्ते नरसिंहा गला गलाशे पौर्वशा शिला कंका तो नृसिंह पर तो नृसिंह यथो यथो यथ तो नृसिंह बाहर नृसिंह हृदय नृसिंह सिंह मदीम शरण प्रपदे जाय नृसिंह देव जाय नृसिंह देव जाय नृसिंह देव जाय नृसिंह देव जय प्रहलाद महाराज जय प्रहलाद महाराज प्रहलाद महाराज जय प्रहलाद महाराज जय लक्ष्मी नृसिंह जय लक्ष्मी नृसिंह जय लक्ष्मी नृसिंह जय लक्ष्मी नृसिंह जय जय नृसिंह 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 जय नृसिंह जय प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद शिव प्रभु पद जय जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद जय गुरु देवा जय गुरु देवा जय गुरु देवा जय गुरु देवा
went to the bank of the river Yamuna to water their calves. When the calves drank water from the Yamuna, the boys also drank. After drinking, when they were sitting on the bank of the river, they saw a huge animal which looked, like, which looked something like a hero and was as big as a hill. Its top was as strong as, the, as a thunderbolt. When they saw that unusual animal, they became afraid of it. The name of this beast was Bakasura, and he was a friend of Kamsa's. He appeared on the scene suddenly and immediately attacked Krishna with his pointed, sharp beak and quickly swallowed him. When Krishna was thus swallowed, all the boys, headed by Balarama, became almost breathless, as if they died. But when the Bakasura demon was swallowing up Krishna, he felt a burning, fiery sensation in his throat. This was due to the glowing effulgence of Krishna. The demon quickly threw Krishna up and tried to kill him by pinching him with his beak. Bakasura didn't know that although Krishna was playing the part of a child of Nanda Maharaja, he was still the original father of Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe. 
Mother Yashoda's child, who is the reservoir of pleasure for the demigods and who is the maintainer of saintly person, caught hold of the great gigantic Huron by the two halves of his beak, and therefore his covered boys bifurcated his before his covered boyfriends bifurcated his mouth, just as a child very easily splits a blade of grass. From the, sky, from the sky, the denizens of the heavenly planet showered flowers like, like the Malika, the most fragrant of all flowers, as a token of their congratulations. Krishna liberates his devotees from fear. So here the covered boys, they, they became afraid and that is common to all human beings. When they saw that big uh, animal, that bird, they were afraid because uh, the image of that bird, it was fierce. So, so it's normal and evident that they felt fear. But when the, the, that animal swallowed Krishna, their fear grew even bigger. But then the covered boys saw that it was merely a Krishna's pastime. That was a, just like a game for Krishna. So Krishna is God. He controls any situation. Mm -hmm. His senses are controlling. His senses are those of the one who is uh, mm, taking pleasure. He is the uh, source of all pleasure. Without his pleasure, our senses cannot feel that pleasure. Because our senses are not controlling, they are submitted. We get some possibility uh, to get that pleasure, but it is restricted, it is limited, but Krishna doesn't have any limits. He is Govinda, the one who uh, rules all the senses who is the owner, the master of all the senses. So, these pastimes, they, they become very amazing, really amazing, because what coward boys cannot do, Krishna can. They are amazed at how this hero split spit Krishna out and he remained uh, safe and what Krishna does nobody can repeat he's the supreme personality of God that's how he bifurcated his mouth so, although the, the bird was gigantic we cannot understand it logically. How could he have done that? Because it was gigantic and he split it into two parts. Well, the heron was like a mountain, but Krishna was a small covered boy. But how could he do? Uh, how could he do that? How he could uh, bifurcate his mouth? split it into two parts. It's supernatural, supernatural power. When the boys saw the showering of flowers and heard the celestial sounds, they were struck with wonder. Yes, because there was a shower of flowers from the demigod planets and music. So when boys saw that, they were very amazed. 
And when they saw Krishna freed from the mouth of the great demon Bakasur, all of them, including Balarama, were so pleased that it seemed as if they had regained their very source of life. As soon as they saw Krishna coming toward them, they one after another embraced the son of Nanda and held him to their chests. After this, they assembled all the calves under their charge and began to return home. So they felt enormous happiness after that very fearsome event. So they all embraced Krishna, pressing him to their chests. So demons, they have one relationship with Krishna and devotees feel different things. Uh, when they arrived home, they spoke of the wonderful activities of the son of Nanda. When the gopis and covered men all heard the story from the boys, they felt great happiness, because naturally they loved Krishna, and by hearing about his glories and victorious activities, they became still more affectionate toward him. Thinking that child Krishna had been saved from the mouth of death, they looked upon his face with great love and affection. They were full of anxiety and couldn't turn their faces from the vision of Krishna. The gopis and men began to converse amongst themselves about how wonderful it was that child Krishna had been attacked in so many ways and so many times but by so many demons, and yet the demons themselves had been killed by, and Krishna had remained uninjured. They continued to converse amongst themselves about how so many great demons in such fierce bodies had attacked Krishna to kill him, but by the grace of Hari had not been able to cause even a slight injury. Rather, they had died like small flies in a fire. Thus, they, they remembered the words of Gargamuni, who had foretold, by date of his vast knowledge of the Vedas and astrology, that this boy would be attacked by many demons. Now they were actually seeing that that was coming true, word for word. For example, it is said that uh, the power of nature is great, so if a person is wicked, nature can send uh, um, something bad to that person just to punish him. But um, but Krishna is fully dependent on his devotees. He protects them. One of his names is Svatantra. That means nobody can control him. But also he is Aswatantra. He is fully dependent on his devotees. But still he is independent. As we saw it in previous uh, pastime, he is playing with his boy uh, coward boys, but you should oppose him. And what do the coward boys say? If you go, we will never play with you again. So, what should Krishna do? If every jiva, every creature on Goloka Vrindavana is very attached to Krishna, but he has his, his free will, his independence. So, he is dependent from the devotees, but he is independent in um, making devotees' desires come true. How can we explain this moment of de dependence and independence? 
For example, when Krishna plays with, with Yashoda, there aren't any covered boys, no gopis. Uh, uh, Yashoda is completely involved in Krishna's service, and, they are, oh, and there are only two of them. But then uh, Krishna goes to the field with his friends, and so there is no Yashoda. So, every devotee has his personal time for associating with Krishna. So, in one period he is fully in the uh, in association with Yashoda or with other gopis. Krishna never sleeps. He doesn't need sleep. He does need to sleep. But when Yashoda puts him to bed, he, mm, he pretends to sleep. But in fact, he goes to dance rasa uh, lila with the other gopis. And during that rasa lila, no other devotees are present except him and gopis. So, due to this independence of Krishna, there are different seasons, different times, different periods of the day. It's a very, very interesting and vast picture of his pastimes. So he can become a friend of anyone, and still he is not an ordinary friend. He can realize every desire. All the covered men, including Nanda Maharaja, used to talk of the wonderful activities of Lord Krishna and Balarama, and they were also so much absorbed in those talks that they forgot the threefold miseries of this material existence. That's why we should talk about Krishna. When a person talks about Krishna, he gets liberated from his uh, miseries and troubles. When our tongue is engaged in chanting uh, of Krishna's pastimes, you will never feel those miseries of the material world if you get absorbed by the process. You will be liberated from that conditioned state that you are in right now. There is a story when third group of uh, Soviet devotees came back from Vrindavana. Uh, I think they've spent for about two months there. I was in the second group. When we came back, we, we expected that uh, after we returned from Vrindavana, we thought that the one who comes back from Vrindavana, he is a pure devotee, automatically liberated soul. So we all gathered together and listened very attentively to the stories of those pilgrims who came from Rindava. We also said something when we came back. But when the third group came back, they were um, just the beginning devotees. So we gathered um, in the suburbs of the city, in a small house. So the, the pilgrims came and they were very peaceful, very tanned. Everybody looked at them as if they were fully um, and totally sealed. 
they told us different things, ordinary things, what they did there. And suddenly we heard the people, the peacock chant. Everybody felt good sounds, those um, fragrance of Vrindavan. I thought, oh my god, what peacocks can be here? It's St. Petersburg. But we heard that peacock chanting. <laughs> Later we got to know that these were some cats making sounds. But we, at, the, at that moment, we felt, we were so absorbed by their stories that we believed that uh, these were peacocks. Mm -hmm. This is the power of Krishna. So, covered men, they did the same thing. They either spent time with Krishna or uh, speaking about him. When Krishna was not with them, they just tried to uh, recall how he looked, what he did, how he played his flute. So, and they were in such a bliss that they forgot about everything, about Kams and other demons. This is the effect of Krishna consciousness. What was enjoyed 5,000 years ago by Nanda Maharaja can still be enjoyed by Krishna conscious persons simply by talking about the transcendental pastimes of Krishna and his associates. The Lerama and Krishna enjoyed their childhood pastimes imitating Lord Ramachandra's monkeys who constructed the bridge over the ocean and Hanuman, who jumped over the water to Ceylon. They used to imitate such pastimes among their friends and so happily passed their childhood life. So, they imitated Lord Ramachandra, constructed the bridges. We can get more details from other stories. How exactly did they do that? These are mystical stories. When Krishna does that, on one hand it's, a, it's just a game, pastime, but on, other, on the other hand it's his superpower. Once Krishna asked gopis, it was uh, on occasion of some holiday to give all of their necklaces away to decorate the cows. Gopis got offended. <laughs> to give our pearls for, for the cows? No. Krishna said, okay, you will regret that. So he it was the period when he is still very young, he is a small child. So he comes to his parents, he says, Mom, Dad, I want to plant some pearl. I see how you plant something and then you crop. So I want to plant some pearls and then get a lot of pearls. Well, Nanda Maharaja says that you cannot plant pearls, it won't grow. Pearl is not kind of seed, but Krishna acts as a silly child. No, Dad, I want to plant pearl. Why is that, that pearls don't grow? I want it to grow. Okay, so Nanda Maharaj said, okay, play, <laughs> play, and he gives him some pearls, just prevents not to forget where will he put them into the ground. So Krishna starts to plant pearls. All the bridge buses are laughing at him, and gopis as well. Krishna, what are you doing? Krishna's planting pearls. 
Krishna does everything very, very attentively, seriously. He waters that with yogurt and ghee <laughs> instead of water. <laughs> That's a pastime of laughter. Well, the most mirac miraculous thing is that those pearls, they really grew, grow, grew. <laughs> it blossomed. <laughs> and then they, the rape, big pearls appeared. Everybody were deeply impressed. So Krishna got a very good harvest of pearls. So gopis became angry. So, so they also put all their all of their pearls into the ground, but nothing happened. And Krishna said, "Okay, I've told you." So, well, when you are in Vrindavana, you can uh, learn more details of this villa, of this pastime. Yes, there are some stories that are not recorded in Shastras, but Brijabhasis, they remember them. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 11th chapter of Krishna, killing the demons Vatsasura and Pakasura.